Hi Bailey. I'm really excited that you asked me to help you out with this project that you're on. I think it's really exciting. Uh, there, there is so many people in your heritage on your mom's side that you could have wrote something about. Um, particularly some of the women. Uh, in fact, uh, you have you're descended through three of the passengers on the Mayflower. Three of them. You have many, many ancestors who fought in the Revolution. Um, but one of those uh, persons that was on the Mayflower was a teenage girl. Her name was Mary Chilton. And uh, her parents had died before uh, she, uh, she arrived to, to America. And she's credited with being the first one to set foot at Plymouth Colony there. She was on the boat coming from the ship as you see in this picture here and she got so excited she just jumped right off the old boat and into the water and just waded her way in. She got so excited. And uh, you're also descended from a man by the name of John, uh, William Town. William Town. He had two daughters that uh, are really famous. You've probably heard of them. Uh, one of them was Rebecca Town Nurse, and the other was Mary Town Esty. Uh, these two sisters were uh, in their 60s and 70s when they were hung in Salem for being witches. They were accused of being witches by a bunch of giddy teenage girls that did these crazy antics and, and uh, convinced the whole town that they were acting weird because these women were witches and had bewitched them and that's why they were acting that way and it took them a while before the the town figured out these teenage girls were just uh, wrong and it was actually the hanging of uh, Rebecca Town nurse that when people finally you know had enough of it and said there, there's something wrong with these girls it's not it's not everybody else in town being a witch um, you might find that interesting to study that for a little bit uh, you have another ancestor that uh, is very unique in that she is an Amer um, uh, Native American. Her name was Katonaris. She was born about 1600 maybe. Uh, we really don't know. But she's unique in that she was a Sakam or a Sunksquaw, which means she was a chief. And uh, she had the power to trade land and to, to the, the English when they came and uh, being the matriarchal head of the tribe she would uh, also have the power to choose which males would uh, would go out in the war parties uh, or lead those war parties she was uh, she's very unique in that she's one of the very few Native Americans women that we actually have a name for she married a Dutchman by the name of Van Tassel. That's how we know about her. Her son uh, wrote a petition to the governor to get control of land that another tribe had taken that uh, it wasn't really their land. And uh, but by that time, his mother was dead. But he did mention her name in that petition, and that's how we know about her. So she's one of the very few uh, Native American women we have a name for. You know, like Pocahontas and Sacagawea. Well, we know about this woman here. Her name was Katonaris. And, you know, all these women would be interesting people you could write about. But then I thought that uh, Herodias Long would be would really be interesting, too. But uh, I'll let you look at all the papers, see what you think. Maybe, maybe you'll change your mind and write about one of these others. But uh, anyway, uh, let's get on with it. Let's talk about Herodias. Okay, Bailey, I'm going to put a little perspective to this to, for you. We're going to start with my father, right here. And he's your great-grandfather. So that's your first great-grandfather. And we're going to follow down here to Lula Mae Wheeler, who was his mother. We'll come back up to her father, who was James Ferris Wheeler, who was actually in the Civil War. And then we'll go down to his mother, Harriet Ferris. And then we'll come back up to her father, Josiah Arnold Ferris. And then we're going to end up right here with this lady right here. This lady is Phoebe Hazard. And she is your sixth great-grandmother, or at least one of your sixth great-grandmothers. So starting with here, we're going to go to the next list. 
Okay, now we're on the second chart, and we see we have Phoebe Hazard again here, and it says fourth great grandmother. Now that'd be my fourth great grandmother. It'd be your sixth great grandmother. Okay, so let let's zoom out here a little bit, and slide this over. Let's take a good look at this chart. You'll see that her father was William Hazard, and her mother was Phoebe Hall. And this red line here separates the two families. There's two different families her mother's family and her father's family. And the blue line separates her grandfather and her grandmother on this on her father's side. So these two, fa two uh, families don't connect here, as you can see. That line separates them. There is no relationship between these that uh, it's blood related. Now, again, sixth great grandmother, then this line here would be the seventh great grandparents, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, and then finally 13th great-grandparents. So each one of these is direct line ancestors. These are all uh, great-grandfathers and great-grandmothers of yours, and they all have contributed to the gene pool that you have swimming around in you. So we're going to uh, zoom in on a couple of names here. Uh, First, I want you to notice this Arnold here, Oliver Arnold. If we zoom back out and come down, we have Caleb Arnold. He's in that same generation. That's because these two men are brothers, and they're in two different family lines here. So the Arnolds were very, uh, that name was very prominent uh, in the later generations of Phoebe Hazard. It was a very uh, prominent middle name because these people on both sides of this family were very proud of the fact that they were Arnold's. And you'll see that is because their father, Oliver and Caleb, their father was Benedict Arnold. Now this Benedict Arnold was not the one that was the uh, traitor during the Revolutionary War. This is his grandfather, Benedict Arnold. And he was the first governor of Rhode Island and one of the founders of the uh, colony of Rhode Island. And he plays an important role in the story of uh, Herodias Long that you're, uh, that I'm going to be telling you and showing you in the different things I'll be sending uh, in an email. So let's get started um, up here a little bit, talk a little bit about these people. The first one we want to talk about is Margaret here. It says Margaret with a question mark and that means that Margaret's last name is not known. We do know that she married William Odding, and they had a daughter named Sarah. So Margaret is your 12th great-grandmother. Sarah is your 11th great-grandmother. Well, Margaret's husband, William Odding, died, and she remarried. And the man she married was John Porter up here. So th Margaret is on both sides of this family. Here she is as Margaret Odding. That was the married name she had when she married John Porter. And the two of them had a daughter named Hannah. And Hannah is also your 11th great grandmother. So that Hannah and Sarah are half sisters. And so Margaret transcends both sides of this family. Now, the, here's the person that we were, the main story is about, which is Herodias Long. Now, this name, Herodias, is very weird because there's only one other Herodias that we have in history. And she is in the Bible. And she was uh, uh, the person that had John the Baptist's head cut off because he was uh, telling her that she was uh, an evil person for sleeping with her uncle. So that's really not important. The fact is that this name is weird, that anybody would name their kid Herodias. It's like naming your kid Adolf Hitler or something. It, it, it's unbelievable that somebody named their kid Herodias. Let's just put it that way. Anyway, she had married a man named Hicks, which is in the papers that I'll send you, and you'll know all about him. But in this line here, since none of the children that Herodias had through uh, Hicks is in the, in the family, he's not on this chart here, but George Gardner is, and he's also in those papers. Now, when she left and was separated from George Gardner, 
she actually married the, your 12th great grandfather from another line on this other family. She's crossed over the blue line here and now she has married your 12th great grandfather and he has given almost all of his property to her children rather than to his children through Margaret. Well, the one child that he had through her plus the children he had from a previous marriage. So this chart kind of gives you an idea of your ancestry and who these people are and the relationships they are as you go through the papers. Remember that uh, when it talks about Benedict Arnold, he's your 11th great-grandfather. Herodias is your 11th great-grandmother. And then so is George Gardner, your 11th great-grandfather. And John Porter is your 12th great-grandfather. Now, remember, uh, Herodias was pretty poor most of her life with Hicks and with Gardner. But when she married John Porter, she married the richest man in the colony. So when he gave his land to her children, it was a big deal in those days. They thought that she was manipulating him. Well, I'll let you decide what you want to do. Maybe this is not interesting to you, or maybe it is. So if you got any questions, just give me a call.